response. Uh, today we'll talk about uh, polynomials on graphs. More precisely, I will talk about uh, how we can use a polynomial to, to characterize or to distinguish between trees and how we can uh, extend some ideas from other people to obtain a new polynomial to distinguish between phylogenetic networks. Um, here, I have organized my talk between uh, these points, two of them, uh, polynomials on graph and a bit of algebra, it's like an introduction. In the first point, uh, I will talk about uh, what are the polynomials and how uh, can be used to, to obtain some properties on, on graphs. Then I will introduce some uh, definitions and results it's an, an easier result, but it's it's the base to prove uh, some results in, in this talk uh, from the algebra. And then I will explain how uh, from a paper from Penguli, it's an excellent paper, uh, he defined the polynomial to distinguish between phylogenetic trees. And then uh, we will explain in, in more detail how uh, in a, in a joint work between uh, myself, Tomás Martinez, uh, Michael Hendrickson, and Andrew Francis, we have generalized this polynomial to work uh, to distinguish between phylogenetic networks. And I will finish to, to explain some ideas uh, of, of future work. And then, um, <coughs> okay, the polynomials are an algebraic expression. And in this context, uh, we are interested or, or the people are interested in to define polynomials uh, from which we can uh, extract uh, some properties of, of the graphs. Then the idea is, OK, uh, can we obtain a specific uh, property or a parameter like the isomorphism of a graph only by viewing the polynomial. And the graph polynomial, it's considered uh, interesting if, if this obtention of the properties are relatively easy. Um, I will explain just two examples of uh, popular polynomials. Um, the first one is the chromatic polynomial, which is one that uh, a lot of people knows. Um, and this is a polynomial in just uh, one variable. And it's really common that this kind of polynomials it's uh, introduced by... Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Um, introduce it uh, using a recursive definition. And in that case, this polynomial was introduced to count the number of ways to color a graph using a fixed number of colors. When I am talking about color graph, I'm referring that if I have two nodes and I have an edge between them, then I must color one vertex using a color and I must color the other vertex using another a color, a different color, okay? Um, and then we can use this polynomial to count this number of ways to color a graph J using a specific number of colors. Um, using this polynomial, for example, we can deduce what is the chromatic number of, of a graph, that is, which is the, the minimum number that we can uh, paint all the graph. Okay, we can color the, all, the, all the graph. And using the recursive definition, uh, in that case, we can compute the polynomial of the graph. Uh, first, using two operation of delete an edge or contract an edge. And in the base case, we can find that the, the polynomial that you, you you must uh, compute it's the polynomial associated to an empty graph. 
that in that case, if, if you have each color, you can paint every of these nodes using each color. Then the results in this case will be it's to the power six. Okay, this is the base case. Um, for example, we I have here a complete bipartite graph with uh, six uh, vertices, two and four, and the associated polynomial is this polynomial here. Okay, in that case, if we evaluate this polynomial for each equal one, we got that is zero. And if we evaluate this polynomial at two, it's different of zero. And this means that the chromatic number of this graph is uh, exactly two. We need just two colors uh, in, this, in this case. Another uh, popular um, polynomial is the Tut polynomial. And in that case, we are using two different variables, x and y. And we have um, a definition that is based on the connected components of the, of the graph. In that case, we have a multiple application in the, in the field of, uh, in the area of uh, in physics, in chemistry. In, um, and in that case, for example, here we have the recursive definition, which is based on the kind of uh, of edge that you are considering. And in the special case that I have here, this is a cycle graph of uh, six vertices. The associated tooth polynomial is this one. And for example, using this polynomial, I can obtain the number of spanning trees of the graph. Well, for instance, this is a result that says that if you evaluate for x equal one and y equal one, the two polynomial, we count the number of spanning trees. In this example, for example, uh, it's not easy to, it's not difficult to, to see that I have uh, five spanning trees, just uh, deleting every one of the edges. And then if we evaluate this polynomial in one, one, the solution is exactly uh, five. Okay. These are different examples. Here I have a more sophisticated example using this the same polynomial, but the idea is, okay, I have a polynomial and uh, probably it's uh, defined with the, with the goal to obtain some property of a graph. Um, okay, just from this, from these two examples of the, of the chromatic polynomial and the tooth polynomial, we can see that uh, neither the chromatic polynomial and the tooth polynomial can be used to distinguish between uh, graphs, okay? For example, if I consider simply uh, a simply graph like a tree, okay, we can consider this example, okay, this tree with these five vertices. And if I consider this other tree here, four, five, Okay, these are not isomorphic. And then if we compute the chromatic polynomial, we have that the polynomial associated for both trees are x, x minus one to the power of four in both cases. Then the polynomials cannot be used to distinguish between these graphs, okay? The same occur if you use the tooth polynomial. Okay, then uh, these polynomials cannot be used to distinguish between graphs. Uh, indeed, for the simple case of, of a tree. Then I just uh, remember some uh, basic results from the from the algebra. Um, here, just explain that uh, a polynomial. In, in the each variable, in that case, using one variable, 
is an object like this one, where these are the coefficients of the polynomial, and we have a finite number of the coefficients that are different of zero. Okay, this is the polynomial. Uh, the polynomials is always uh, seen in the coefficients in a set. Okay, we can consider the same object uh, varying the, the coefficients in a set or in another. All, this, all the polynomials that I will explain later are the coefficients in the set of integers. Okay, and the set of integers is uh, a ring. Is a ring when we consider two operations, sum and multiplication. Okay, this is a basic case of a, of a ring. Then if we consider the set of all polynomials with the coefficients in the integers, we have, for, the, for example, this set. Okay, this is the terminology used to define the set of all, poly, of all polynomials with the coefficient in the, in the integers. And the two operations that I am using here can be generalized to sum and multiply the polynomials. Then we can talk about the ring of polynomials. And you can generalize this idea using one variable, two variables, or more variables. Uh, it's common that uh, for some results, it's interesting to consider the coefficients in a field. Okay, The um, z, it is not a field, but then we can see uh, the ring of polynomial with coefficient in the integers uh, as a subset if you consider the coefficients in the in the rationals, okay? Um, okay. One important point is the irreducibility of a polynomial when it is considered in uh, with the coefficients in a in a field F. Okay, we say that the polynomial is reducible if it can be factored. Okay, if it can be expressed as the multiplication of two non-constant polynomials. In the other case, the polynomial is irreducible over the, over the field. For instance, in that case, we have that this polynomial here is reducible in, uh, in the In the ring of uh, considering the the coefficients in the in the reals, and also for example uh, here. And then, if we consider this other example here, this is a, another polynomial that is reducible in um, over the field of of reals but it is not reducible, it's irreducible in uh, here, because the coefficients that I am using here are not in the rationals, okay? And it's very common that uh, if we are, if we, if we try to, to determine if a polynomial is irreducible, uh, to use this criterion here, this is the Einstein criterion. If we have an integral domain, that is a commutative ring uh, without uh, zero divisors, and we consider the prime ideal in the in this domain and the point and the polynomial with the coefficients in in D, then if it satisfies these three conditions then the polynomial is irreducible in this in this ring okay in that case we must prove that the uh, leader coefficient of the polynomial it's not in the ideal the rest of the coefficients are in the ideal and the the first uh, coefficient of the polynomial it's not in the in the in the ideal that is obtained by 
multiplication uh, the result of the of the ideal of the multiplication the i by uh, i another another result it's well, another definition it's the ufd it's an, a unique factorization domain uh, probably the most uh, easy example of a unique factorization domain is the set or the ring of of integers. Uh, probably uh, everyone knows the um, fundamental theorem of arithmetic that says that uh, every integer can be factored uh, using a finite number of uh, prime numbers. Okay. Uh, this is the similar idea. Okay, we have a uh, unit factorization domain. If every non-invertible element can be factored into a finite product of irreducible elements, then this means that if we have an element in the domain, then this term can be always uh, factor it using elements that are irreducible and this factorization is unique okay if we consider two decompositions of the same element that must be uh, this condition uh, probably using uh, an invertible element. Then, um, in that case, given that uh, the set of integer, the ring of integers, it's uh, a unique factorization domain, it can be extended to prove that the ring of polynomials with coefficients in the integers, it's also a, a unique factorization domain. Then it is possible to express uh, to factor every mm, polynomial uh, in one variable with coefficient in the integers with uh, a unique expression of a product of irreducible polynomials. Then the same occurs if we consider a polynomial with two uh, variables and it's really common to see this object that is the set of polynomials, the ring of polynomials with two variables as um, the ring of polynomials in the y variables and the coefficients in the ring of this object here. Well, this is the idea to prove, for example, that this object by induction is, is uh, a unique factorization domain. These are the ingredients for the for the net result coming from the from the algebra. Okay, uh, now I am going to explain how uh, was defined a polynomial to distinguish between trees between some kind of 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 trees, and uh, all this work is coming from the paper from uh, Peng Yu Liu. A three distinguished polynomials that was published uh, one year ago, and all this part is 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 the work from from this paper. But I consider that it's really important to uh, explain the basic ideas that I will use uh, later. And uh, there are some results uh, that are using the same base that he uses in the. In this in this paper is uh, in the Netzelen paper, uh, and I will explain uh, the basic ideas. Okay. In that paper, um, was introduced the polynomial for uh, rooted and unrooted trees, uh, and it's not exclusive of the binary setting. But I prefer to just focus on the. On the binary case, which is more easy, binary setting, and in the rooted case. Okay, I will explain this case. 
because the the technicalities is are, are easy to to explain. And uh, here we have two versions of the polynomials. The first one is when we consider the tree, okay, the phylogenetic tree, uh, without labels, like a shape, okay. And this, in the other part, we have another definition of the polynomials where all the leaves are labeled, okay. Uh, the idea is exactly the same, and uh, like the other examples, the definition of the polynomials is recursive, okay? And in the base case, we can compute the polynomial associated to this tree with a single node with an x. Uh, just to remember, uh, it's the definition, the, the, the object, the, the polynomial ring that we are using here, it's a polynomial with the coefficients in the integers and uh, with two variables in the first case, okay? And in the second case, we are using n variables if it's are exactly the labels of the leaves and an extra variable y. Okay, in that case, we consider objects in this ring and in the labeled version, we consider the polynomials in this ring. Um, the idea is exactly the same. Uh, for the single case, we are apply uh, the definition of the of these three is exactly it's polynomial of this tree is x, and if we have a tree with two pendant trees t1 and t2 uh, for the for the children of of the root, then the the polynomial associated to the tree is uh, y plus the product between uh, the polynomial associated to this tree here and the other tree here okay this is the basic idea uh, in this definition um i love this <laughs> this definition because it's it's really simple Okay, the idea is okay, you think just and the uh, and the important thing here for me is the idea to use this point. This is the key of the polynomial that can be used uh, to to distinguish between trees. Okay. Um, for the label version, just if we have uh, a leaf a tree with a single node that is labeled by some uh, element here, then the polynomial associated to this tree is exactly the same, the, the label, okay? And the definition is exactly the same. Um, okay, just an example. Okay, for example, if we have I will start with example without uh, without labels. For example, for this for this tree here, we can compute the polynomial associated to t by computing the polynomial here and the polynomial associated here. In the left uh, and right side, we have the same in that case, and we have this object in each side. Okay, this is T1 and T2, and the polynomial in T1 is this object, okay? And then the polynomial is the same in T2. And we can conclude that the polynomial in T is way plus the product of the polynomials between uh, T1 and T2, okay? Uh, it's 
this object here. Okay, if we compute the elements here, we have like uh, e, e to the power two, two e plus plus, plus it's four. Then the polynomial associated to the tree is this object here. Um, okay. Now, uh, in the in the pen in the paper from from Liu, it's uh, he don't use this alternative definition, but uh, we consider a similar idea when we define a polynomial on on networks, and I think that it is interesting to see a polynomial like like a function. Okay, because the polynomial, um, the idea is. It's that the polynomial uh, you are viewing the the polynomial only on the root. All the information about the graph is by viewing uh, the root. If we consider the same definition uh, than previously, when we talk about, um, for instance, this case. We can consider the function p from from this set of of nodes u one u two u three etc. And the polynomial is the function that sets that sends to this set of trees. an element in the ring. U1, it sends to the polynomial that I uh, computed uh, before. And U3 is eight, U2 is this element, etc. Then, it's just to see that we uh, we can consider a polynomial defined directly only on the root, that is the same definition that we have previously, or like a function that assign a polynomial for every vertex in the in the tree. Um, okay, now I, I I would like to explain um, what is the relation. Uh, between the polynomial and the Newick format of a tree. It's really common that uh, the trees are uh, characterized or are compacted uh, with an object that can be used from the from a computer, for example, um, which is the Newick format. For instance, the previous uh, tree the Newick format of the previous tree is this object here. Then it's not difficult to see that the polynomial saves this object. Okay. For instance, how we can pass from the from the polynomial to the Newick format? This this could help us. To, to recover the object, okay? Um, it's, it's really simple. We just, uh, we can subtract the, the Y element. We can compute this object here and we obtain this polynomial. And this is the difficult part we must uh, factor the polynomial, okay? In that case, we have that uh, this can be factored with this, uh, with these two, with these two objects, okay? Every time that we can produce this operation of subtract y and factor the polynomial, we can obtain this object here. 
Okay, we can use this expression. Okay, and then repeat the same operation. We can work with this object and with this object and repeat the operation. If we repeat the operation, we have this object here. We can subtract E, we obtain it's to the power two. And then we can replace this object by this object here. Okay. And then we have finished. This is exactly because if I'm considering this object here, I cannot subtract y from, from this polynomial. And this is exactly the new weak format of the tree. A similar operation can be done uh, in the other direction. We can obtain the polynomial uh, from the new weak format of the tree. Okay. I think that it's really interesting because it's it's a way that okay uh, we are saving the same information that the new week format okay um, okay this is uh, another uh, result about consider the polynomial and how we can interpret the coefficients of of this polynomial. Um, for instance, for the other case, uh, for the previous case, we have this object, uh, the polynomial was this object here. Okay, and uh, it can be seen that these coefficients here, we have a one here, we have another one here, we have a two here, and we have another one here, can be obtained from an object, obtained from the tree. Okay, we consider some kind of subtree that Pengyuli uh, calls the primary subtree of, of the of the tree that is a rooted tree that shares the same root with the, with the tree. And any leaf of the tree is either a leaf of the primary subtree or the descendant of a leaf of this primary subtree. Okay, just to explain a, an example of this, of this case, for instance, uh, we consider uh, can use another color here. For instance, this object here in blue is a primary subtree because all the leaves from T, which are these four uh, leaves here, are or leaves shared with the primary subtree or descendants in this case or uh, of a leaf uh, in the in the primary subtree. Then, in that case, we have exactly uh, the following primary subtrees. Okay, we have uh, the basic example that is this one here. We can have uh, the one that I. Right previously, this one we have the analog. Oh, sorry. In the other part, we have this one. Okay, we consider this part only, and we have only considering the root. Okay, then if we count, if we separate that, uh, how many leaves of the primary subtree are leaves of the initial tree and what is the number of other leaves of the primary subtree which are internal nodes of t it can be proved that we can apply for every one of the primary subtrees a new monomial of this form 
For instance, the monomial associated to this primary subtree are exactly this term here. It's four, because all the leaves of the tree are leaves in S in that case. Okay. Um, these two cases allows to obtain this coefficient here, because in that case, I have two leaves of the primary subtree that are leaves in T, then the alpha is exactly two, and the power of one is exactly the other leaf that is an internal node of T. Okay, um, this is the case that allow to compute uh, this coefficient here. We have one primary subtree with this property and the last case that is this one here. Okay, I think that this is also really interesting because uh, allows to obtain, um, this is really common in, in in some areas of, of phylogenetic to obtain uh, an object from a set of subtrees, set of networks that uh, comes from the from the initial object. Um, okay. Oh, wow, well, it's so late. Um, why it works this uh, as isomorphism uh, invariant this polynomial? Okay, I, I try to explain it uh, fast. It's relatively easy that proof that the polynomial defined here is irreducible in this ring of polynomials. The idea is to use the Einstein criterion. We can consider um, this domain here, this domain, and consider this, the polynomials as an object with the coefficients in this domain here. Okay, this is the idea. Um, and then use the ideal generated by Y. Okay, and using the interpretation of the coefficients, it can be seen that uh, they always satisfy the three conditions that I uh, previously explained. Um, I have seen that this ring of polynomials is an example of unique factorization domain. And the function that sends to every tree the polynomial associated in, in the ring in, in two variables is one to one. Then this allows to distinguish between trees if we have two different two non-isomorphic trees, the associated polynomials are, are different, okay? Uh, and to prove uh, that case, it's really easy using these two facts here, because if we proceed uh, by induction on the set of, on the set of vertices, um, if we have that if we produce in the in the other direction, if we have uh, this situation here, okay, and we can imagine that we have, for instance, uh, in as one vertices in T1 and in T2, and we consider that the polynomials are the same, we can consider these uh, objects here. This is T1 and the same for T2 and uh, we can, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, just to explain the idea because I think it is interesting. We have T1 and T2, and we can consider uh, these other trees. Okay, for instance, T1, 1, T1, 2, 
T to one, T to two. And for the definition of the polynomial, we have that T one, one, T one, two, it's equal to this object here. And then <coughs> we have an equality of irreducible polynomials. Okay, because we're using, we are working in a, a unit factorization domain and uh, we can deduce that this polynomial is exactly equal to this polynomial or exactly equal to this polynomial. And both of them have uh, less vertices than the original one. Then we can apply induction on, on that case and we can deduce that uh, T1 is homomorphic to, for example, to uh, T21. To and T1 well for the other case and, the, and, the, and then if the two pendant uh, subtrees are uh, isomorphic, T1 is isomorphic to, to the other. And this is the idea in the, in the, in the proof. Okay, I'm now moving to, to explain uh, how we can generalize uh, this idea to define a polynomial for, for distinguish between trees, uh, to distinguish between subkind of phylogenetic networks. This is a recent paper that actually, uh, has been accepted in, to be published in, in PLOS One, and it's a joint work uh, from myself, uh, Thomas. Martinez Coronado uh, from, from my research group, Michael Hendrickson and, uh, and Andrew Francis. Um, okay, I found that, uh, I have found a previous generalization of the, try to generalize the previous polynomial to work on networks. Uh, this is the, this, this paper here where uh, you use this definition, we have here uh, a network, okay? And uh, they consider the set or the multi-set, we consider multiplicities of, of trees, uh, the multi-set of spanning trees of the, of the network. And the definition of the polynomial on the network is the product over the considering uh, the polynomial computed over every one of these spanning trees of, of n. Uh, the problem here uh, is that this set here uh, does not characterize uh, general phylogenetic networks. For instance, uh, it can be used to uh, characterize three child networks. We can find this result uh, here, but not for general ones. Then uh, using this definition of the polynomial on networks, it's only a complete isomorphism invariant for three child networks, but not for general ones, okay? Then uh, in our one, our objective uh, was to obtain a, a more general definition uh, that could be used to distinguish between more general uh, networks. To, to obtain the result, we, um, we consider, um, I just remember what is here, my definition of phylogenetic network, and we consider some variants of, of, this, of this object. We consider a phylogenetic network without parallel arts, we have uh, the leaves has uh, out degree zero and in degree one. And I have a bijection to label every leaves, okay? Um, the root has uh, out degree in, the, in degree zero, of course, and out degree two. And then for instance, in this, in this case, I'm not considering uh, this situation. And uh, we have two kinds of, of nodes, as is usual. We consider the three nodes, where the three have uh, 
two channels and uh, the reticulation nodes which have uh, in degree two and out degree one okay this is the general definition or one, one of the most uh, used definition of, of phylogenetic networks and now we consider uh, a more general object uh, that I call uh, internally multi-labeled phylogenetic networks. I have uh, put in red the differences uh, from the other definition. Um, the idea is similar, but uh, the main difference is, okay, we have only a surjection uh, to label the, the leaves. This allows, for example, to, to have multiple labels in the uh, in the leaves, we can uh, have the same sorry the same label uh, in the in the leaves. Okay, this for instance, this situation um, is accepted here. Okay, same label in in the leaves. Um, we can also allow elementary nodes, okay, also for the root, and then we have uh, three kinds of nodes. These are uh, elementary nodes, out degree exactly one and in degree exactly one, um, and also the two previous cases. Then we have these three objects, and the main difference is that we label, we label uh, all the reticulations and also all the elementary nodes. Okay, in such a way that we restriction to the reticulation nodes. Uh, this function here is uh, one to one and we consider uh, different labels for the reticulation and for elementary nodes, okay? Um, okay, these are uh, IMLN object here. Then I will, I will uh, explain an, an example. Um, there are some results that uh, I am using this general definition of internally multi labeled networks that uh, we allow, for instance, uh, elementary elementary nodes and this situation. But for other results, I prefer to just focus on a new concept that I call internally labeled phylogenetic networks, which is a more um, easy idea that we only consider a phylogenetic network where every reticulation is labeled by a bijection. Okay, this is the object that, uh, that uh, we are using here. Remember that our goal was to define uh, a polynomial that can be used to distinguish between uh, general phylogenetic networks. And in that case, uh, we think that uh, probably we need to label the, the reticulations. For instance, um, here's an example. This is a phylogenetic network. We have, for instance, here reticulations. Okay. This is an example of an internally multi labeled phylogenetic, uh, internally multi labeled phylogenetic network. We have a label to the reticulations here, lambda one, lambda two, and lambda three. Okay. This is also an example of internally, oh, internally, no, sorry. Uh, yes, internally labeled phylogenetic networks. Yes, this object uh, don't does not uh, have uh, elementary nodes. Okay, um, 
and these three objects here are objects from this set okay because here we have elementary nodes here here we have more elementary nodes and here i don't have reticulations but i have elementary nodes here okay um this is a, a process too this is a folding and unfolding process that for example was used to to characterize a specific subclass of network called uh, fu stable networks it's a similar idea but here we consider the level uh, for every um, elementary node that is produced during this process uh, the idea is start with this object here and using a specific order in that case for instance we can uh, unfold first this reticulation here and copy the the tree painting to this node with two copies here okay this copy here and this other copy here okay we can then uh, use the same idea for the for the next uh, reticulation and we obtain these two uh, isomorphic subtrees here and finally we can unfold this reticulation here okay and this is a tree this is a tree where the uh, every elementary node uh, is labeled okay the idea is that uh, this object characterizes this object okay it can be seen that we can recover this object using this trick here okay? this is the unfolding unfolding process um okay the similar ideas that are explained it uh, for the case of the tree for instance the interpretation of the coefficients uh, or the or the comparison between the polynomial and the and the newic format can be used here as slightly modifying these definitions okay the coefficients of the polynomials can be deduced from this object from this tree here okay um okay what is the definition of uh, our polynomial very simply um the definition uh, works in the general case okay the definition is is done in the in the general case um we are using uh polynomials in the in this ring here we have uh these are the labelings of the leaves these are the labels of the reticulation and the elementary nodes and we have an extra variable this is y and the and the idea is uh, if we have the same situation that the previous case the definition is exactly the same okay if we have uh leaf the polynomial associated to this uh, node is its its label. For the case that I have two uh, a tree node with with two children, then the definition is exactly the same as in the in the case of of the tree, and this is the the new part because in that case we have uh or this situation or this situation and this node and this node uh is always labeled by for example lambda e, and then the definition on this node in the articulation on the or in the elementary node is this product here okay this is the generalization of the of the polynomial coming from the from the trees and the definition of the polynomial on the network is the polynomial on the on the root as uh, i explained it in the in the other case um 
This is, for example, the the polynomial associated to the to the labeled network that I uh, explained in the in the other in the other case. Okay, we have exactly the same. We can have just an example, for example, to compute the polynomial associated to this tree. We have here uh, e plus the polynomial associated here and here, which is lambda two to x two, and the product of the other part, which are lambda three x three. Okay, and using the same idea as the as, and the other case, we can go now here. We can go uh, here, 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 and finally we can compute the polynomial on the root, and we obtain this this object. Okay. Um, some results. Um, okay, in that case we can prove that the irreducibility result uh, it's true only for the three nodes, okay? The proof is exactly the same that in the previous case or similar than in the previous case uh, that I explained for the, for the case of trees and for the case of, for instance, uh, a reticulation, the polynomial associated to this object is an object like this one, it's B. Okay, if it is label it with lambda E. And this is reducible. Okay, it's factored with two polynomials. Okay. Um, And the other one is that if we consider the unfolding tree of the network, uh, it's proved that the polynomial associated to the network are exactly the same, the same to the polynomial associated to the tree. Okay. For instance, if we use the same definition that I explained here. Uh, for this object or for this object, the results are exactly the same. Okay. Okay. Mm. Now, um, just to present an example of uh, the difficulties of the problem appears, is that here we have uh, some sketch of, of three uh, trees, uh, internally multi-labeled trees in that case, is the, sim the simple case. Um, look at for the U node, okay, in that case. And we have uh, three different situations, three non-isomorphic trees. Uh, in that case, we have two elementary uh, nodes in, in the left side. Here we have an elementary in the left and another one in the right side. And this is the, the other case. And the polynomial in the, in the node U are in all cases exactly the same. Okay, this is probably the, the main problem trying to extend the result from one to another. Um, in that case, it's important to consider this uh, situation that uh, one can be seen uh, here. It's like uh, a node, a tree node commonly, uh, and a path where the uh, intermediate nodes are elementary nodes or reticulations. In that case, uh, we call this path uh, on a strong path, and uh, we say that U uh, W is a strong descendant of the node uh, U, or U is uh, a strong descendant of uh, W. Okay. Then <coughs> here we'll try to explain um, how we can obtain it uh, a sufficient condition to to apply on 
on networks in the with the goal to prove that uh, in one um, polynomial associated to a network is equal to polynomial to another network if and to leave we have isomorphism between both networks this is the spectral result in this in this problem but uh, this is not true all right we think that uh, this is uh, not true and we must impose that uh, this not works in the general case we need to impose uh, some conditions on the networks and these conditions explain it here this topological restriction on the networks uh, allows to prove that uh, the polynomials allows to distinguish between them okay uh, the idea is is to try to define a, a topological condition this is not a definition on this kind of object it can be used in the phylogenetic networks okay um, and we call it separability um, and we say that uh, a node u is separable if we have in the situation that both it's a, it's a definition on the only on the three nodes both of them are uh, three nodes or we have a situation like uh, this one and or uh, this one i prefer to see it in the in a in an example uh, which is uh, probably more more easy to to understand and we say that the network is separable if all of its three nodes are are separable okay we have here uh, the idea look at this as a node we can consider that it's a it's a three node and this uh, kind of paths are a strong paths okay for instance we can think that all the nodes here we can think just uh, in the in the case of phylogenetic network we can think that all the intermediate nodes here are uh, reticulation nodes Okay, that a node is separable. This node here is separable if we have this situation here or this situation here. Okay, in that case, in the first case here, uh, we can see that here there are um, another node that is a strong ancestor of a node here but it is known it is known an a strong ancestor of any other node in this two strong paths okay this other case we have that u2 it's a node that satisfies this condition okay is a strong ancestor of one of the children of you okay um, and it is also an, a strong ancestor of one of its descendants okay we can think that this situation can satisfy for the this knot okay it's the same interpretation um yes we have that this node is a strong ancestor of uh, one in this path and it's also a strong ancestor of one of these descendants here okay the idea is that uh, we can distinguish we can compute um, the polynomial in a three node we have this situation here, uh, B1 and B2, where uh, B1 and B2 are the children of the node U. Okay, this is the computation of the polynomial associated to this three node. The idea to introduce the separability 
it's that in these conditions, in that case and in that case, uh, we can obtain what is the contribution of uh, this polynomial and this polynomial or uh, this node and this node here. Okay, we can distinguish which are the, for instance, the reticulation lying in this part and in this part. And this is not possible in this situation. This is a, I have an example of, of this. This is a non-separable uh, network. It can be proved that this node, this node, and this node are not separable. Okay, for instance, here, uh, I have the node. Uh, it can be seen that these are one strong path. These are the other strong path for this node, for instance. Um, and uh, look at this node here. We have this situation for this node. It's exactly the same that I have uh, here. Okay. We have you and we have this situation in that case. And we have the same for this node. Both are strong ancestors, but uh, are a strong ancestor of one in one strong part and in the other part. Okay. We had the same situation here for the three nodes, U1, U2, and U3, and the polynomial associated in this node here is exactly the same to the polynomial associated to this other node in the other network. We had the same situation for this one and for this one, and we had the same for this one and this one. And the networks or the mm, Subnetwork represented here are not isomorphic. Okay. Well, Juan, just uh, sorry for interrupting you. I just wanted to let you know that we're a little over time, and so some people might need to leave. So just to let you know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I am finished. Okay. Just um, three minutes. Um, okay. Then, with these conditions, with these conditions, um, we import the condition of separability. We had the expected uh, result. Okay that we can distinguish between two, two networks uh, by using the, the polynomials associated to, to them. Okay, just some lines of future work using these polynomials. Um, it can be used to define matrix to compare, uh, to compare uh, networks. For instance, using there are uh, some distances that uh, uses the, the coefficients of the polynomials uh, to, to obtain a comparison between these, these objects. We can think that uh, we could think about how to extract more information from, from the network. For instance, we can think if we can distinguish between some subclasses of networks. Um, Thinking probably in problems like the, gen, um, the generation of, of networks, it's, I think that it's interesting to think, uh, to determine which polynomials can be derived from, from a network. Okay, this could allow to, to define um, a way to generate uh, some networks. Um, now I have some work done and in this point uh, about uh, how uh, we can uh, optimize the, the previous um, polynomial to distinguish between some subclasses of network. For instance, it's necessary to use all this label in the reticulation nodes, or we can use, for instance, just one, or it's... Uh, it is easy to think that if we are focusing in the FU uh, stable networks, if we can obtain the network from the poly, from the tree without uh, 
elementary nodes using the unfolding. We don't need the, the labels on the articulations. Um, we need to think more about the separability condition. I think that it's at this point it's a, it's a sufficient condition to prove the result, but I think that it's uh, I don't know if it is a, a necessary condition. Uh, and okay, this is just a generalization of a previous result, but uh, there are probably more more example of. Of polynomials that can be used to to distinguish between between networks. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry for the delay in the presentation. And if we are interested to contact me for something, please uh, send me an email. Thank you.